Hey guys, it's Karina here with another video. So today I'm talking about another controversial issue, yay! So this summer I've been discovering a lot and in this fall too I guess, just this whole season of life I've been experimenting and um, discovering new things and challenging my faith. So the most recent thing I've been challenged on is sexuality, marriage, relationships, just all of it. Um, and my opinions have changed a lot. I did have a marriage and relationship video on my channel, but I did actually take it down because my opinions have just drastically taken a different change in a complete different 180, if that makes sense. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about sex, marriage, relationships, just all of it in one video. So here goes. So the first thing I want to talk about is this amazing book I just read. It's called Shameless. It's by Nadia Boa Boaz Weber probably said that wrong, but it's an amazing book about how she um, changed her sexual ethics and how she went on a journey of a sexual reformation and um, just t completely took a 180. And it's an amazing book and um, yeah, it's so well written. She's an amazing woman um, and I highly re recommend you read it. Um, yeah, so let's jump into the video. So the first thing I want to talk about is what marriage meant back then and what it means today. So marriage back then um, was simply for procreation and it would happen as soon as you got your period, like at 13 or 14. It could be as young as that. Um, and today, sometimes people don't get married till 20 or 30 and you choose who you want to marry in most cases, or at least in North America. Um, so it's just a completely different thing um, from back then and today. The other thing I want to share with you guys is that 80% of Unmarried Christians have sex before marriage, and that most males have sex at the age of 16, and most females have sex at the age of 17. Um, so this just shows that sexual desires start as soon as puberty, and um, we desire sex from a young age, and um, that, you know, we have sexual desires. Um, and I'll add more to the sexual desire thing later on. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, how you want to be smart about marriage. And I personally think at all costs you want to avoid divorce. And I think that if you have sex and then live together and then get married, you're avoiding a lot more complications. And what I mean by that is you're going to know a person a lot better if you have sex, live together, and then get married because you've lived together. Whereas if you get married, then have sex, then live together, it's just a different process, which is totally doable as well. I just think that, you know, if you have the opportunity to live together, then you know whether you can live together. Like, some people just can't live together, and then they can just break up and avoid going through a messy divorce. And, um, yeah, I think you should be absolutely sure about the person you're marrying. Like, obviously, there's always going to be risks in marriage, but at all costs, like, it'd be great if you could know that person and know what to expect in your marriage. And also I think that if you save sex for marriage, sometimes people make marriage about sex. So often girls will get married at like 18 because they really want sex and um, they want to save sex for marriage. So that's just a really young age to get married when your brain is not fully developed. Um, so I think that, you know, it's wise to actually take those steps and do that before you're married um, to avoid things like that. Um, what else? So sex, blah, blah, blah. sexual compatibility is something else as well. Um, you know, some people aren't sexually compatible and, you know, they'll get married and they, you know, save sex for marriage and then they end up having like terrible sex and they just aren't sexually compatible. Um, and I think, you know, having sex before marriage, you can discover, um, who you're sexually compatible with and what your sexual desires are. Um, so I think that's an important thing that we can discover if we have sex before marriage. Um, okay, so I want to talk about what the Bible says about marriage. So first off, Song of Songs is actually pretty much an erotic poem. And it has been interpreted as different things um, to avoid this connotation, but it is actually um, translated into an erotic poem. And I think that God created us with desire. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the story of Adam and Eve, and after Adam and Eve um, took a bite of the forbidden fruit, 
um, they felt shame and they knew that they were naked. Before that moment, they did not know that they were naked. Um, and after that moment, they hit their bodies. And God asked, who told you you were naked? God did not tell them that they were naked. God did not create shame or give them that shame. That was just brought upon them or from the devil. Like they were not supposed to carry shame. We should be unashamed of our bodies and unashamed of our sexual desires. God created us with sexual desires and we should not be suppressing those sexual desires. Um, that's why I think purity culture is so toxic because it teaches us that we should suppress our sexual desires until we are married. Um, it teaches us to go into certain gender roles and it teaches us that you know that we have to save sex for marriage even though um, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, another thing we need to realize is purity is not holiness. It's just easier to find what is pure than what is holy. So we pretend that they are interchangeable. Yeah, ultimately I don't think suppression is a good or healthy thing. And ultimately suppression leads to problems in your marriage um, and your future relationships um, and your body. And like, you know, something you need to realize is the soul, mind, and body are all connected. I listened to this beautiful podcast, it's on the liturgists, um, and it was with Jamie Lee Finch, and she is a sex such, and that sounds kind of funny. She's really just a sex counselor, essentially, and helps people connect to their sexuality. And something we need to realize is that our mind, body, and soul are connected. That means we need to take care of ourselves and take care of our sexual desires. Um, and that means that all of these things are connected and we shouldn't be ashamed of our sexual desires or our bodies. Um, and I highly recommend you listen to that podcast. It is so amazing. She, something really cool is that she calls her body a she and she respects her body. Um, and I think that's something we forget to do sometimes. Like, I just feel so ashamed of my body sometimes. I don't respect it. Like, that's not respect by feeling ashamed of my body. And I think that we should treat our body with care and... Um, you know, take care of our body. I think it's really important. Self-care is so important. Um, yeah, and I think that sexual flourishment is amazing and beautiful um, when we can have that. And sexual flourishment looks like incarnation, gratitude, generosity, everyone without exception, accompaniment, forgiveness, connection, holiness, poetry, and shamelessness. That is what true sexual flourishment is. So what does all of this mean? I think that this means that we should just simply have sexual integrity. I don't think you have to save sex for marriage, but if you are, that's great, and I totally respect that. Um, but I think that there's other options, and I think that we need to adapt and change our faith with society changing all the time. So consider what I've said today, and consider what you want to do, and I think that all in all, we should have sexual integrity. And what does that mean? That means having enthusiastic consent, um, being with someone you trust, and having mutual respect for each other. And when I say enthusiastic consent, that doesn't just mean like yes or no, that means like enthusiastically saying yes, essentially is what enthusiastic consent means. And I think that sex education is also really important and that we educate ourselves. Um, it's really important that we know our bodies and we know why our bodies are the way they are. And I don't think it's bad to explore that or um, explore what your sexual desires are or explore all of these different things. Um, I think that we should, yeah, explore um, all of these things. And I think that, um, yeah, we shouldn't be ashamed of our bodies. So be shameless and be proud of yourself and be loving to yourself. Be just amazing and beautiful the way God created you. Um, I hope to do more videos about some of the things I briefly touched on um, and talk about them. And if you guys have questions or comments, just put them below, like this video, subscribe, um, and I will put all of the links in the description box of the resources, podcasts, books, and everything I've read and listened to. Um, yeah, I highly consider you guys just listen and you know, just try not to be so defensive or judge what they're saying. Just listen and see what you think of these things. Pray about them. Talk to God about them. Um, yeah, I just encourage you guys to listen and see what's out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and know that if God puts you to it, he will put you through it. Alright, bye guys.